In this video, we're creating realistic miniature scenery for diorama and model railroad. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial, which is the first in a series of three of how to create realistic miniature scenery. And in this first video, we will of course start from the bottom. <laughs> Meaning creating the, the foundation for our landscape. Uh, how to plaster, how to select colors, mix paints, paint and also what we can apply on top of that uh, foundation to make a kind of realistic ground look. And then in the following videos, number two and three, we will work with the bushes and the lower type of vegetation. And in the third video, distant type vegetation and crafted trees. So that's the whole series. It's coming this autumn. So uh, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Enable that little bell and you will get notification one, once every of these videos come uh, online. But let's get started with the groundwork. Now, even if your landscape surface is supposed to be flat, I recommend applying some kind of potty anyway. This is because landscape surfaces are never entirely flat and level. So no matter what you apply on top of your flat styrofoam or whatever you have, plywood, it will not look realistic if the surface is totally level and flat. I'm using a product called Husfix, which is a concrete based paste, which do not shrink or crack. So that's a big advantage. But all the manufacturers has similar products. Noch has a landscape plaster, Faller too. So there is a lot of uh, different materials to choose from out there. Make sure though to get a product which has sufficient working time, because if you, for instance, select just pure gypsum, then you will not have the time to prepare the landscape surface before it cures. I think a reasonable time, working time, is 20 to 40 minutes. So that's something you should look for on your package. And as you see here, the Noch product is kind of fast in my taste. So you only have 15 minutes. It may sound like a lot, but it's not. So here I am spreading the putty over a surface where I previously have been gluing turf in place just to get a you know, finished look before I do the final preparations. This uh, putty here is uh, making up this road. And as you know, roads are always a bit elevated from the landscape, but the rest of the grounds around the road has previously been uh, added putty before I glued the turf and grass in place and here you can see the thickness so the thickness under the road is like five millimeter whilst under the landscape it's between a half and a two millimeters thick but let's now go back to the plaster surface ahead of painting it the first thing you should do starting on a new layout is to establish basic color tones for your landscape this is very important, otherwise it's very hard to maintain the same color tone over the entire layout. So to do this, I'm typically buying a sack of chinchilla sand. This can be found on your Yosu store. This uh, fine particle sand can be used throughout the entire landscape process, so it's a very good foundation. You also need a set of uh, pigments. I'm using burnt umber, burnt terra and iron oxide yellow with black white and these three pigments with the chinchilla sand can produce any ground coloring anywhere including planet mars so what i do here i i try and error a bit with these colors so i start with a yellow here because in my photo i have a kind of yellowish uh, ground so I mix this I shake it in a bowl and look here we get really close just by adding the the burnt terra the yellow burnt terra to the chinchilla sand maybe we should have a tiny portion of red in this but it's not necessary here's another example here's a more um, well gray tone graveled area so I would uh, guess that we need to add uh, a portion of black now the black is a very strong uh, pigment so I'm just adding a tiny amount into my chinchilla sand. 
Now, adding only black will give a kind of bluish tint to uh, the, the sand, but since the sand is a bit yellowish in its ground, ground color, it, it works fine. When you are mixed uh, a color reference for each of the main surfaces of your coming layout, then put them in small bins like this and a label on top and save them until you have completed the layout. Now another way to set the ground tone colors and maintain them through the entire build is to select one or several different colored turfs. Like here you have from Woodland Scenic the yellow grass turf. Now the drawback with the turf is that it's what it sounds, it's turf. So if, if you're planning to make a lot of dry ground, which is you know, basically gravel, then this is perhaps not the best foundation for that, since this will look like something that grows. But the advantage is the simplicity. You just simply select a color which is close to what you want and then stick with that through the build. But let's now put this uh, ground color to test. I start by painting the surface in a somewhat darker brown than the sand and then I add glue in which I will sprinkle my chinsilla, my colored chinsilla sand here. So I'm sprinkling so I'm kind of covering the entire surface. Now once you have the gravel ground in place the easiest way to get a realistic appearance of the ground is to add turf. And for my layouts I'm typically using earth blend as the base color and with spots or streaks of green blend. I pour the turf over into disused uh, spice cans like this. So I have one can for uh, earth blend which is the the more brown one and a similar one or actually identical for the green blend. I then apply glue on the surface where I want my turf. I typically use static grass glue because it dries matte and transparent. And I'm typically stippling on the glue like here so I don't get the streaks from, from the paintbrush. Then it's just to sprinkle uh, earth blend over the most of the surface just leaving some spots here and there uh, with glue and in those spots you instead uh, sprinkle in the green blend. What I do then is to use a soft round brush uh, and this brush uh, is used to stipple uh, in the in the turf like this and it has two purposes the first one is obviously to push the turf into the glue so it sticks better but it also removes that powdered look from from the turf then it's just to vacuum the surface so you can get rid of all the the turf uh, which is lying on top and once ready it looks like this. So, so using turf like this is a very time efficient way to cover large surfaces and get a, a really realistic look. Now let's instead work with static grass as first layer. And let's now add that thin grass from, um, from the picture we had a moment ago. Now if you remember the, the area was very dry so the, the grass was very thin uh, and not very dense. And to uh, achieve that I'm using the fine sieve on my uh, a grass applicator so I get a, a slow application of grass to the surface. So here comes the first the, the, the more green uh, grass and I just apply that in streaks. The glue I'm using here is uh, static grass glue from Noch. Um, it's um, somewhat better. It dries absolutely transparent and matte, which is an advantage, especially when applying such a thin uh, grass like this, because then the, the surface is fully visible through the grass. So the second layer of grass here, or I would say the layer, the grass applied in the other surfaces is a 2.5 yellow grass. Lastly, I'm adding tufts and the tufts is just uh, drops of uh, the same static grass glue, which I apply all over like this. And then I load my static grass applicator with six millimeter golden yellow grass which makes up the tufts in the pools of glue. And if you have problems with that, the grass do not 
stand up properly, then you use a vacuum cleaner to raise the grass. And this is what it looks like. Now compare this with the colors and the appearance from our prototype photo. You see it, it's, uh, it's kind of close. We have the same uh, ground color. We have the same low density grass application. Now, as mentioned earlier, static grass on a layout is kind of messy. So what you can do is to make your tufts on this kind of waxed oven paper. It's uh, common for uh, food cooking in the oven. And you tape that to your table like this. And then you apply, uh, well, not spots, but uh, shapes of uh, static grass glue on the surface. Then you load your static grass applicator with the favorite uh, mix of green color and apply kind of richly because tufts are typically kind of dense with grass. And once done, you just vacuum your uh, paper and then it will look something like this. Now, this is very suitable if you've started with, uh, uh, say, a, a turf uh, b base for your landscape, then just to glue this in place. And the tufts I made here was made with four millimeter static grass from Woodland Scenic, light green and medium green. Let's now say that you're planning to build a South German or South European type layout with very rich grass growing. And also I want to show you how to apply 12 millimeter static grass. That is half inch grass. And for the uh, applicator, we have three sieves. I'm selecting the one which has a medium flow to the surface. In the applicator, I'm mixing six millimeter with 12 millimeter uh, green grass. Doing this, the six millimeter grass will help the 12 millimeter straws to stand up better. So if you just apply 12, it will all lay down. Now, if you put a sock over the nozzle of your vacuum cleaner like this, you can reuse some of that uh, static grass, which lands in other places than what the, where they should be but this uh, method can also help you to make the grass stand up and also lean towards desired directions look through this grass now the surface below is white of glue but you can't see that so if you're modeling something like this a south german landscape the ground coloring has less importance and your color reference instead becomes the color of the static grass. Lastly, we'll talk about the, the base coloring of mountains and rock sides on your layout. And I would say that a, a common beginner's mistake uh, coloring their mountains is that they become too bluish and they don't mix color. So the coloring is very uniform and therefore does not look all that realistic. So here are some of the mountains uh, on my layout. This is a uh, typical Scandinavian uh, rock sides. And I'm, I have a link up here uh, uh, to a video where you can do exactly this. Now in this video, we'll instead talk about the method of mixing gray paint. So. To get a gray tone, you mix white and then a brown paint of your choice. The flat earth here to the left has a, a more yellowish tone, while the burnt umber has a more reddish tone. And then into that, you just mix one drop of black. Now, painting large areas of gray color, you should of course not use these expensive uh, colors from Vallejo, but uh, the big tubes of uh, acrylic paint from Liquitex. They're available at very decent cost. So what you do here, you take white and then you add in burnt umber brown. And you see here, I get a kind of reddish, almost pink uh, tone of uh, gray. And then I just add one drop of black into this and suddenly it all turn into a kind of warm reddish gray paint. So this is uh, typically what I have as the base color for my Scandinavian uh, rocks, where we have a large portion of iron in, in, the, in the mountain. Now, if you're building something uh, 
with sandstone instead you should of course not have as much red in in the mix this is the flat earth brown and um, well you see it's a much more yellowish tone and with one drop of black it turns into a kind of yellowish uh, gray so once you get a hang on mixing colors you get that variance of color over the mountainsides following the same color tone which gives a very natural look and here's the result of our mixing exercise you have the reddish gray in the middle and the more yellowish gray to the right so depending on what your prototype is you know if you're going for some photos like i had here uh, which was from the cisco line in the united states or or if you just you know have a a kind of imaginative uh, uh, landscape you want to make uh, swiss alps or something like that get some photos download from the internet or go there take some photos uh, so you have a, a kind of foundation of what things looks like that simplifies work a lot when you create these fundamental uh, definitions for your layout because you know a layout like here i've been building on this for 10 years and from one section to another it can take a year between these two sections <laughs> and that is very good to have those cans with a well, what was the color about and how did i mix this really so otherwise you forget <laughs> So it's it's a uh, I, I think it's a uh, it's a foundation to to get a, a consistent look of your of your landscape if if that's what you desire. Uh, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you have useful the information provided and like the content of the channel, get over to Patreon. Set up a support account there from you know like one two dollars per month, uh, or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below this video. And as said earlier, if you have not yet subscribed, subscribe and enable that little bell, and you will get uh, a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya.